ಪ್ರಶ್ನೋತ್ತರ ದಿಶಿ ದೇವತಾತ್ಮ ಹಿಮಾಲಯೋ ನಾಮ ನಗಾಧಿರಾಜ ಪೂರ್ವಾಪರೌ ಸೋಯ ನಿಧಿವಗಾಹ್ಯ ಸ್ಥಿತ ಪೃಥಿವ್ಯಾ ಇವ ಮಾನದಂಡ Describing the great mountain wall of India in the Kumar Sambhag, Kalidas writes, There is a mountain in the north encircled by the Himalayas, the king of all mountain ranges. Stretching from the east to the west like a measuring rod, it is located in the north. Cradled in the lap of these mystical Himalayas, nestles the awe-inspiring earthly abode of the gods. Garhwal. The worshipful silence and sublime peace of these mountains casts a spell on all who come here. These hallowed peaks hold a special fascination for saints and sages who are irresistibly drawn here in their search for eternal truth and its manifestation through solitary meditation. The enshrined images of immortal deities also find their rightful setting among these celestial mountain ranges. Myriads of legends have been intricately woven around these sacred summits, adding to their aura of mystery and grandeur. Down the ages, painters, poets, saints and writers have glorified the sublime beauty of Garhwal. Taking a rightful claim to the title of Dev Bhumi, Garhwal is also the birthplace of the most revered rivers of Indian mythology. While flowing down the mountains, these rivers mingle with one or the other at the six prayas before they continue their journey down to the plains. Vishnu Praya is the meeting place of the Alakananda and the Vishnu Ganga. Nanda Praya witnesses the mingling of the Alakananda with the Nandakini. At Karna Praya, the Alakananda joins the Pindar Ganga. Rudra Prayag is the meeting place of the Alaknanda with the Mandakini. At Son Prayag, the Son Ganga becomes one with the Mandakini. Dev Prayag witnesses the meeting of the Alaknanda with the Bhagirati, which together flow down as the Ganga. The mystery and the majesty of the Garhwal region has always inspired religious fervor. Badrinath and Kedarnath, amongst the four revered dhams of Hindu religion, are located here. Apart from giving sanctuary to all spiritual leaders in Hinduism, Garhwal is also a region equally sacred for other religions. The tenth Sikh guru, Govind Singh, had a dream about his meditation in an earlier life on the banks of a glacial lake surrounded by seven peaks. This place was identified in Garhwal and a shrine was built at Hemkun Sahib in 1936 as a homage to the Guru. A sacred pilgrimage site for the Sikhs, Garhwal plays an important role in the Sikh religion. Adi Shankaracharya established one of the four seats of the Shankaracharya at Joshimant. Religious fervor draws a large number of people to Garhwal. 
some are lured by the awe-inspiring beauty, while it is the spirit of adventure which beckons others. Despite the rugged and difficult terrain, Garhwal attracts flocks of tourists who arrive to savour the cool climate away from the sweltering summer heat of the plains. Apart from its scenic and spiritual attraction, evidences of Garhwal's rich heritage abound in the architecture that survives till today. In earlier times, small forts or guards perched on hilltops provided the local chieftains with protection against attack from neighbouring clans. Later, when they were brought under a single ruler, these forts fell into disuse. Though they have deteriorated with the passage of time, the images of various deities installed by the chieftains continue to be worshipped till today. In the 15th and early 16th centuries, Ajaypal united the small feudal forts into Garhwal and laid the foundations of an empire. He shifted his capital from Chandpur Gari to Devalgarh and finally made Srinagar in Garhwal his capital. The palace that he built 500 years ago still stands today. This architectural wonder is made of the two most commonly used building materials, heavy stones and wood. The building style too is synonymous with hill structures that are found today. Sloping roofs of slate allow the snow and rain to slide off instead of settling down. The carvings on wood and stone survives till today, bearing witness to the artistic excellence of the artisans. Travel in the hills was especially difficult in the earlier days because the hills were not bound together by roads. Villages were scattered, remote and difficult to approach. In the absence of electricity, travel at night was impossible and life in the mountains was cold, dark, dangerous and daunting. Maybe this physical harshness of the terrain and the severe climate toughened the Garhwalis, paving the way for their being recognized as a martial race. With a population of 19 lakhs, Garhwal is home to a varied people with cultural and occupational differences. The upper regions next to the greater Himalayas are peopled by nomadic tribes like the Bhotias. The severely cold weather dominates their lives. Snowbound for six months in a year, these nomadic tribes live in these upper regions from April to September. Sheep rearing, which is associated with the woolen industry, is their sole means of livelihood. As the area is snowbound with no rains, and the summer season is very short, the only agriculture that can be carried out consists of potato harvesting, along with the sowing of a staple green crop. With the construction of roads, other market purchase produce can be transported to these nomadic tribes during their stay in the upper regions. Culturally also, these people are different from their counterparts of the lower or Shivalik ranges. They are possibly the only people who celebrate the Pandav Leela.
The Shivalik ranges are more populated than the upper regions, and the people have permanent dwelling units. The houses follow the ancient building patterns, consisting of sloping roofs of slate and walls constructed with stone and pillars of wood. The villages are set closer together and the climate and terrain and soil conditions permit the cultivation of crops. As the hills are not so steep, cultivation is carried out on the terraces or hill slopes. Dependent mainly on the rainfall, crop cultivation on the slopes is self-sustaining. Along the river and canal banks, irrigation too is possible. Cultivation in the hills is a family occupation involving the children also. As agriculture is rainfall dependent, it revolves around the monsoon months from June end to beginning September. Yet, the people manage to turn in three harvests, consisting of rice, wheat and coarse grains. The staple food of the hilly people is this coarse grain, which resembles a very small variety of rice. Work in the hills is managed mainly by the women. Men plough the fields and the women carry on from there. Pounding the grain to fetching water, looking after the farm animals, milking the dairy cattle, collecting fodder for the livestock and fuel for the house for use during the long winters. It is the women who are in the forefront on the fields, in the house or outside it. Despite being toughened by the harsh terrain, the severe climate and the unending hard work, the Garhwalis are a fun-loving people. Their happiness and joy finds a spontaneous expression through their songs and dances. The Tariya dance is a captivating outpouring of happiness at harvest cutting or any other event worthy of being celebrated. 
education has also been brought within the reach of every village child. These institutions are co-educational. Almost every village has a primary school, while a group of villages has a high school. Colleges have been opened in different cities. All this has resulted in the younger generation being almost 100% literate. Centers for higher education include the HN Bahuguna University, Garhwal, at Srinagar. While educational facilities have prepared young men and women for work, paradoxically, there are almost no job opportunities available in the hills. This leaves the young people with only two alternatives, to migrate to other states in search of work or to join the armed forces. Rent from their hearth and home, the men depart to earn a living. While men must work and women toil, the aged and the infirm are left alone to keep an unceasing watch for the day of their return. Loneliness is the price they have to pay for the security of the money orders from the cities. Garhwal is a unique geographical area which produces a class of fighting men and traditionally the army has been the main job provider. Garhwal rifles have played a major role in providing careers in the armed forces. This has been the source of earning of most homes in the Garhwal hills. Continuing their work of bringing development in the hills, the Garhwal Rifles have opened several educational institutions for war-affected and needy boys and girls of Lansdowne. The Girls' Hostel is the only one of its kind in the country, devoted totally to meeting the needs and demands of the children of parents who have lost their lives during the wars of conflicts. Stress is laid in imparting value education to help them grow into good citizens. Training and production centers have also been opened by the Garhwal Rifles for helping the disabled Jawans, their widows and dependents to make a living for themselves. Training in sewing, knitting or weaving is imparted and markets are also found for their products. As Garhwal is a wool-rich region, most of the work is wool-related. Woolen socks are knitted here. The colorful Garhwal shawls need no introduction. Even the highly prized Pashmina shawls are woven from the wool shared by the Bhutia tribes in the upper regions of the Himalayas. The long-lasting woolen carpets are woven on these looms. While thousands go to Lansdowne to join the armed forces, many prefer to leave this state in their search for employment. The socio-economic repercussions of this exodus are visible throughout the state, leaving the women to man the fields and the home and care for the young, the aged and the infirm. In the last 50 years since independence, development has knocked on the doors of villages in the Garhwal region. Roads have connected the most remote villages. 
telecommunication advances have brought changes in every household with the advent of satellite television and telephones. The dependence on wood as a cooking fuel has been reduced with the introduction of cooking gas. Earlier, there were predominantly stone and wood houses. Now, one finds traces of modernity in the predominantly cemented structures. Transport facilities have brought cities within easy reach of villages. This has led to migration, and the cities in Garhwal too have expanded to accommodate this influx of people. Yet, development has not kept pace with this rapid growth. The shortage of small industries and factories and lack of job opportunities forces the unabated migration of people out of Garhwal. Yet, the face of Garhwal remains as of yore, unchanging. The people remain simple, unassuming and fun-loving. Their strong cultural roots keep them moored to Garhwal and hold them steadfast in this fast-changing world. The unquestioning belief of the hill people in their deities and gods and goddesses remains firm in the abode of the gods.